First and foremost, I want to give all the honours, the praises, the glory belongs to Yahweh by Sham Yahavashai, by Hasham Wahavakar Kodash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Son's name is Yahavashai, in who I reverence and honours to the apostles that are in the Holy Spirit and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters that are listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days because we are living in the last days right so without further ado we're just going to flow with the spirit right and lord willing this to be edifying we're going to start off on john first john right and jump straight to verse four what for whatsoever is born of the most high right overcometh the world and we know the elect are born of the Most High. They're born of spirit. They're the first fruits. And this is the victory. We are overcome with the world. So that's the victory. What does victory mean? Triumphing. Right? The overcome with the world. So it already says, those that are born of Yahweh, where Yahweh Shai, they've already overcome the world. Bro, so this thing's already been played out in the spirit. Right? Who the elect would be. Them waking up when they would have to wake up and coming back to Yahweh Shai and being bid to the marriage. And by them doing that, they were going to overcome the world. But first, they would overcome their self, which is what? Sin, flesh. Then you can overcome the world. Right? And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So, how have we overcome this world? Through faith. Right? Through the belief in Yahweh Shai. And who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believe that Yahweh Shai is the son of the Most High. So they are the ones that have overcome, that will overcome this world. And that's a beautiful thing to know that. Okay. I haven't got nothing written down. I wasn't even looking to do, do a lesson. But I thought, you know what? Since I'm out here, I might as well press that button and just, start, just do a lesson. Flow with the spirit. Right? So we went to that now, Baba Kisha. Go to Proverbs, because a lot of times we can get weighed down by outer circumstances. What Jehoshua doesn't want us to get weighed down by the outer circumstances, right? He wants you to focus on the mission, okay? Because we already know what's going to happen to the wicked. We already know what's going to happen to them, right? Bro, they're miserable, right? Niggas are thirsty out here. Thirsty for that attention. Right? And let's go to... Let's go to... Bear just a minute. Let's go to... Where should we Where should we start? 31. Proverbs 3 and 31. Actually, go to 30. Strive not with a man without cause. Without any cause. You're not supposed to contend with someone without a reasonable cause. Right? If he have done thee no harm. So if a man ain't doing you no harm, he's minding his business, what are you doing? Why are you striving with him? Because you have individuals like that. They're just nincompoops, right? They're insecure. You ever had that individual you must, once were hanging around with? They need to look around the room, right? Looking for trouble, looking for problems. That's someone that's insecure, right? Strive not with a man without cause, right? If he have done thee no harm. Verse 31, envy not the oppressor. So, the beautiful thing with this truth as well, even when we grow, we don't desire what the oppressor has. We have our daily bread. Envy not the oppressor. A lot of our people, they're coons for Esau, for the so-called white man. They envy him, so they act like him, right? Envy not the oppressor, right? And choose none of his ways. Because if you do envy the oppressor, then you're going to be acting like the oppressor. Right? And choose none of his ways. We don't want to choose the ways of Esau. We don't want to choose none of his ways. Right? But that's what two-thirds of our nation do. They choose his ways. That's why they're not going to make it. Right? Because they act just like the so-called white man. Right? You hungry, Mercer? I'm hungry, Mercer. 
you first female son, I'm first, that type of spirit. And they come up against their own people, right? Just for a little paycheck. It's sad, man. But that's why you, you wanna um, you wanna come back to your Hawashai. This is the only safety in your Hawashai. Everything out here is just chaos, confusion, and anarchy. The only peace you're gonna have is in this world. Go to Romans. This is Romans eight and six. For to be carnally minded is death. Well, you want to be carnal, you want to act like a brute beast, well, that's only, going to, that's only going to lead you to death. But to be spiritually minded, right? So I consider myself to be a spiritually minded man. And some of the spiritually minded, the concern with spiritual minded stuff, right? Is life and peace, right? So being spiritually minded, this great comfort, life and peace, you're giving both. What would you rather want? Hmm? I know what I want. Life and peace. So walk in the spirit. And you'll have those things. A lot of people, they're not at peace. You see it. You see it. Right? People are depressed, strung out on drugs. Right? Drinking bottles and bottles of bottles and litres of wine or whatever. Because they're trying to escape their problems. But how do you escape these problems? Through coming back to your Habashai. Right? And it says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So I'd rather be spiritually minded. Right? And there's great solace, there's great peace, there's great comfort that comes with that. All chaos can be happening around you, but if you have these scriptures, you're still in peace. Right? And it says, because the carnal mind is enmity, is at friction. The carnal mind is all over the place. It's enmity against the Most High, for it is not subject unto the law of the Most High, neither indeed can be. It can't be if it's a carnal mind. It's operating on fleshly basis. So you're not going to be able to see the blessings that you have showing you. And again, I've got to say this every single day, but this week, so like I say last week, because what's, what's Sunday today? Last week, bro, beautiful, pure signs. You know, the Lord ready, Yahweh ready to strengthen me. At your weakest moments, he picks you up. You know, we have our bad days, we have our ups and downs. Then you've got them days where he's just showing you pure signs. Right? Pure signs. Right? And he will show you signs to let you know, yeah, keep on going. I'm still with you. Keep going, man. Keep pushing on. So this is why we got to keep, we got to keep going, regardless of what goes on within our lives. Right? And it says, for it is not subject to the law, even neither did in, indeed can be. So then that are in the flesh, they that are in the flesh cannot please the most high. Right? So if you're always in the flesh, then how are you going to be able to please Yahweh Shai? And that's why I'm trying to practice good habits to the best of my ability. I'm trying to go for more of these walks. Right? I'm trying to occupy myself with more of these walks. Right? It's good. It's fresh, well, I don't want to say fresh air, but it's, be it's better than nothing, right? And you just get to meditate and on the scriptures and get more closer to your Shai. Plus, it's good exercise, right? So, that's why we're doing these things, right? And every time you see a perp or an agent, you just remove yourself. You just don't give, you just don't give them your energy, as simple as that, right? You just don't give them your energy, Right? Okay. Simple as that. Right? Because these demons, bro, they need something to um latch onto. They need something to latch onto. Right? They need the energy source. You've got to understand that demons, they don't have an energy source. They have none. Right? So they need something to um they need something to feast upon. Right? That's why there's so much sacrifices within this country, within this land, within society, because demons need something to feast on, right? That's why. What do you do? You starve them out. What did Yahweh Shai say? Resist the devil and he shall flee. Are you worrying about what the devil's doing? The devil's doing what the devil's supposed to be doing. 
can resist the devil and he will flee. He will look for somebody else. It's simple as that. Right? Demons need attention. They don't have any light. They don't have a source. And that's why most of them, they need to be drained up. Have you noticed that? Most demons can't be alone. Right? Because they need something to feed upon. Right? And it says, Mabakusha, <laughs> but to be godly man is death, but to be spiritually man is life and peace. So, what would you rather? Hmm? But you're not in the flesh. Paul was saying, we're not in the flesh. But in the spirit of Yahweh, if so be that the spirit of the Most dwelleth in you. Right? So we're not in the flesh like these people. Right? They're motivated by the flesh. The flesh tells them what to do. Right? They move by the flesh. It's like they don't have any, um, what's it, restraint. The first thought that comes to their mind, they act upon it. Right? But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirits. So if so be the spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Moshiach, he is none of his. And if Moshiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. So we acquaint the spirit of Yahweh with righteousness, right? And it says it's life, right? And that's how we're able to be what quickened, right? But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahusha from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Mashiach from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Mashiach shall also quicken your mortal bodies. So our mortal bodies become what? Quickened. Right? By his spirit that dwelleth in you. But we don't get any better than that. So we become quickened. That's if you're doing the things that you need to do. Fasting, praying. And going out into the highways and byways, regardless of the circumstances and so forth, from who's around you, Yahushua is able to what quicken you. But that's if you put forth the effort, right? Go to John six and sixty-three. John six and sixty-three. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It's the spirit that makes us alive. It's the spirit that makes us animated. Right? You know a lot of the times when you're teaching, you may be very animated, upbeat. That's the spirit of Yahweh Shai that's making you animated. It's the spirit that quicken if the flesh profited nothing. This flesh, there's no real profit in it. Even though the scripture says in Timothy's um bodily exercise profited little. Little. So now we have to exercise because we can't just completely um what's the word? Let go of ourselves. You know what I mean? So bodily um, exercise, that's profit, but what's the most profitable thing? Serving Yahweh Shai. That's the most profitable thing. Taking time out during your day to do that, right? And get out of that comfortability. Yeah, I found myself getting too comfortable. And that's, they're, the, they're the most horrible times. They're the most horrible times, right? Because that's when Satan comes, right? And starts attacking. When you get too complacent, when you get too comfortable. Right, we're gonna shut off soon. And it says, Baba Kisha. Right, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words that we're speaking here, they're spirit and life. They have a life force to it. That's why. Why do you think when we speak certain things it actually plays out? Because it's life. Right? It's a spirit. It has a force to it. Right? And that's power, knowing that. You can speak certain things, and as soon as you speak these certain things, it happens during the day. Right? It actually happens. It plays out. But the only way you could see that is first, if you pick up the Bible, you read it, you do a lesson, and that lesson plays out in real time. Right? And that's why I always say it's important for brothers, get out. Communicate with certain people that want to hear the scriptures. And you're going to start seeing these miracles happen before your eyes. But miracles can't really happen if you're just reading but you're not doing anything. You know what I'm saying? What did um, Paul say in Romans? I think it Romans or James? Excuse me just a minute. To James. We're going to shut off soon. Go to James. Oh, right on the page. James 2 and 17. Even so faith, if it have not... Go, you know, go to verse... 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith, 
Hmm? And it have not works. Can faith save him? So, yeah, one man can say, yeah, I have faith. Well, can that save him? Hmm? Yeah, I have, I have faith. All right, that's good. But anybody can say that. All right? If I have faith, right, and I have not works, can faith save him? So the faith and the works go hand in hand, right? That's like someone saying they want muscles. Massive, I want massive biceps. But you don't hit the gym. But you ain't hitting the gym. But you want massive biceps. Well, you think them biceps just going to grow overnight? Huh? And it says, Baba Kishah, read that again. What does it profit, my brethren? No one man say he have faith and have not works. Can faith save him? Huh? The answer is no. So works and faith go hand in hand. And that's with anything in life. Right? You gotta put that, you gotta put that work in. Right? And when you put that work in, you get to see the end product. And that's with anything in life. But a lot of men they just want the accolades, they just want to look good. Bro. And it says, check this out. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful for the body. What doth it profit? Someone starving. Oh, you, you get through it, but you got the means to help them. That's wicked. You, know, you get through it. No, you give them what they need, which is what? the words right that's what you give them you give them the words okay that's what you feed them with okay and it says Baba Kasha Baba Kasha and even if faith if it have not works it's dead being alone so one could say he has all this faith but doesn't have the works to back it up they both go hand in hand Alright? Yeah, a man say, though has faith and have works, show me that faith without that works. So Paul was saying, a man says he has faith without works, you show me that faith without, I'm moving too fast. But I have faith and have works, show me that faith without thy works. So you show me someone's faith without the works that they have with that faith. Right? Like I said, both go hand in hand. Alright? So if you have faith, yeah, there's a particular amount of works you're going to have with them faith, with them, with, with, with that faith, to match it. And your faith matches your works. It doesn't have to be, every brother's different, right? Every brother has their lot within this truth. But your level of faith is supposed to match your level of works. Whether you have great faith or little faith, it's still faith, right? And what did you, how should I say? If you have faith as the size of a grain of mustard seed, you should be able to say to this, What's it, this mountain? Move, and it shall move. Right? And that mountain actually represents um, governments, by the way. Right? Mounting. Okay. And it says, And I will show you my faith by my works. So, Paul was doing that, and he was an example of that. Why? Because he was persecuting the church. He had the, he had the most what? Works out of all the apostles. Right? Don't believe there is one power. But they'll do this well. Okay, fine. But devils also believe and tremble. Even the demons believe and tremble. So what makes you any different from the, from the demons that know the words? The only thing that makes you different is that you have that anointing and that power and that authority. That's what makes you different. They believe because they're subject to Yahabashai. That's why they believe. That's why when Yahabashai was amongst them, what happened? Hmm? They said, have that come to torment us for our time. That's what spirit they were in. Right? Trembling. Right? So faith and works go hand in hand. And if you have a quickening, you're going to be quickened. Right? Yahushua's going to quicken his, his prophets. 
It's going to make them a quick understanding. All right? Go to Ephesians. We're going to shut off soon. Let's go to Ephesians. And all these people, they, they all got the same script as well. <laughs> they, all got the, they all got the same written script. You know what I'm saying? That's how Masons do. They have the, all the same script because they're zombies. And to become a Mason, you need your mind cracked. So it's like they crack your mind and Satan jumps up in there. But anyway, <laughs> hey, let's go. But hey, bro, it ain't going to be like this forever. Hey, you have just going to deliver his elect, man. We ain't going to be around reprobates and people that just, you know, off. Off in the spirit. Okay. Hey, baby, just a minute. Ephesians. Right? This is Ephesians 5. And where should we start? Where should we start? 14. Wherefore he saith, check this out. Right? Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. So listen, awake. Supposed to awake out of what that slumber, that sleep. Right? And Mashat shall give thee the light. So he's able to give you this light. When you wake up. Right? See then that you walk circumspectly. Not as fools but as wise. So also with that. With you being quickened. You're going to be able to walk circumspectly. Full navigation. You're going to be able to see what's going on around you. You're going to be able to be circumspect. Right? Okay. Like that movie They Live. You're going to be able to see everything. I've already told you I've watched that countless times. Bro, I want to watch it again today. I just want... Bro... I love that, it's not a movie, it's a documentary and it's based on real life, right? How society is, right? How society actually is, right? More traffickers out there, right? And it says, Baba Kasha, Baba Kasha, awake. That sleep is not arise from the dead. So we're supposed to be arising from that dead state, right? Yeah, a lot of freaks around here. A lot, a lot, a lot of traffickers. Mhm. Mm a lot of traffickers. But that's even gonna get exposed, and that's all right. You know, all that's gonna get exposed and brought to light, right? Oh, the Lord sees what's going on. Yahusha sees what's going on, right? Remember, demons need the light source. And there's a reason why demons like to wear glasses, dark shades. There's a reason why they like to wear dark shades as well. Right? You know why? Because they, they remember their eyes, there's, there's a lot of darkness there. Right? With the things they're doing. Right? Me, really, I don't really need to wear dark. I've got dark shades. I purchased some. But that's the, these are special type of shades for the UV rays. Right? I don't really need to wear dark shades. People wear dark shades because they're hiding their eyes. What are you hiding? Right, you got the light right. You're so you're so called illuminated. What are you hiding your eyes for? Right? To show your face. <laughs> oh man, but you know what? You have by Shimmy have has already got the victory. I'm gonna shut off here. Lord within this was edifying and until the next time. Shallow one, shallow one.